I'd like to share with you why Kabbalah.com exists, and more importantly, what you can gain from this wisdom of Kabbalah. At its core, there is really one teaching that encompasses the entire wisdom. The Kabbalists teach that our world was created, and we, each one of us, came into this world for one purpose. In Kabbalistic terms, it's called lehitiv lenivra'av, which means that the light of the Creator wants every single one of us to have complete goodness, complete fulfillment in our life. The entire purpose of the creation of this world was really for that purpose, so that the world as a whole and the individual can receive and maintain and grow joy, happiness, and fulfillment. Well, if we know that that's where this process started, why is the world that we see, and often the lives we ourselves go through, so different than that? Why is there so much pain, so much suffering, so much chaos in the world and in our lives? And the answer really is the wisdom of Kabbalah. In the physical world, there are rules, physical rules that we have to live according to in order to survive. There's the law of gravity. We know that you don't jump off tall buildings because gravity will pull you down. Imagine if you weren't aware of that law, you would find yourself in a lot of trouble relatively quickly. And the Kabbalist teaches just as there are physical laws and rules that govern this world, there are also spiritual rules knowing them, understanding them, and understanding how they interact and influence our lives is the purpose of the study of the wisdom of Kabbalah. The spiritual rules that govern our lives and our world influence us in greater ways even than the physical laws that we know. And therefore, the purpose of the study of Kabbalah is to begin to understand really how our world operates, really the spiritual rules that govern our lives. When we understand them and begin to act accordingly, we can begin the process of coming to the life that we are meant to have, a life with ever-growing fulfillment, with ever-growing blessings. One of the most basic Kabbalistic lessons is a concept known as similarity of form. We ask why is it that we don't experience life as we are meant to experience it, why the world doesn't experience life in the way that it is meant to experience it. The Kabbalists teach that all the goodness that is in our world, all the joy that we feel, the love that we feel, the happiness that we feel, comes from an energy that is called the light of the Creator. We've all experienced it. When we experience anything good in life, we are tasting, we are receiving, we are connecting to this light of the Creator. The Kabbalists teach that in order to receive more of that light, and therefore more of its manifestations of love, of happiness, of fulfillment in our lives, we have to become like that light. In spiritual terms, when you behave, when you act, when you transform and become more like the light of the Creator, you receive, you have more of that light, and therefore you have more of that fulfillment, more of that joy, more of that happiness in your life. The Kabbalists teach that we are born with two natures, one that is called a desire to receive for the self alone, sometimes referred to as the ego, the desire to always make sure that I am taken care of, always make sure that I receive for myself. That nature separates us from the light of the Creator. There is another nature that we have. The Kabbalists refer to it as coming from our soul, a desire to share, a desire to give to others, that desire, that nature, connects us with the light of the Creator. At its core, the entire wisdom of Kabbalah is to enable that process of transformation from the ego, desire to receive for the self alone nature with which we are born, which separates us from the light of the Creator, into a nature that is more akin to the light of the Creator, a desire to share, a nature of sharing, of caring for others, of doing more for others. When we become more of that kind of person, when that nature really is the stronger nature that operates within us, we become more like the light of the Creator, and therefore we receive more of that light, those blessings, into our life. And therefore, at the core of the teaching of Kabbalah is a process of transformation, a process of change, from an ego, or what the Kabbalists call desire to receive for the self alone nature, into a nature of desire to share. Now, the purpose of that transformation is simple. The more I am like the light of the Creator, the more I am a person who shares, the more I am a person who cares more for others than for myself, 
the more I am like the light of the Creator. The more of that light comes into my life, the more joy, happiness, and fulfillment that I can receive. We've spoken in general terms about the process of transformation that the wisdom of Kabbalah is meant to give us. The reality is, though, that the process of transformation is not an easy one. There are people who their desire for spiritual study is a, a basic one. They want to know some more. They aren't necessarily interested in doing the, the work and sometimes difficult work of transformation. And the truth is that the wisdom of Kabbalah is not for those people. There is the great promise of Kabbalah. If you truly delve into this study and use its wisdom and tools to transform, you can have the life that you are meant to have, a life with never-ending fulfillment. But there is difficult, constant work and constant study that has to be a part of that process. If you're willing to truly delve into this wisdom, if you're willing to do the difficult work that you will have to do to transform, you'll be able to receive the great blessings of this wisdom. So that is the purpose of the wisdom of Kabbalah. It gives us an understanding of our world, an understanding of ourselves, and it gives us the tools that we need to transform, to change, to become the person we are meant to become, and to come into the life that we are meant to live. Now this wisdom has been around forever. It has been around even before the beginning of our world. The Kabbalists teach that when the Creator decided to create this world, He knew that in order for humanity and the individual to go through a process of transformation, you need to have understanding. You need to have wisdom. And therefore this wisdom of Kabbalah has been around even before the creation of our world. It is the wisdom that was meant for every person to have in order to understand and to grow and to change. In this world throughout history, there have been only a chosen few who had access to this wisdom. In every generation, there was at least one person who held this wisdom and taught it to one student. Therefore, the word Kabbalah means to receive. It also speaks of the history of this wisdom. For most of its history, it was a secret wisdom passed on from teacher to student and so on. About 2,000 years ago, one of the greatest written revelations of this wisdom came about. And that came through a great Kabbalist known as Rav Shimon Bar Yochai. He revealed in written form for the first time in history this wisdom. That revelation is what we have today and is known as the Zohar. It is many volumes of wisdom. And then again, it is the first time in history when the totality of these secrets were written down. But even then, the world was not ready and these secrets the Zohar went into hiding. It was concealed. And really only in the past hundred years has this wisdom truly been brought to the masses. The Kabbalah Center was founded in the 1920s by a great Kabbalist, the greatest Kabbalist of our generation, Rav Yehuda Ashlag. And for the first time in history, he brought the secrets of the Zohar, translated them from their original Aramaic into Hebrew with a commentary. And his work continued, writing books and teaching, bringing this wisdom to the masses. He made it his life's goal, and he explained that the only way that pain, suffering, death, and war and destruction can be removed from our world is when this wisdom is revealed to the masses. And therefore, when he passed away, his student, Rav Yehuda Tzvi Branwine, continued the process of teaching, of disseminating, of writing books. But the reality is that until the early 70s, when my parents Rav and Karen Berg, took this wisdom, translated into all the languages of the world, sent teachers to all over the world. Has there truly been the ability for every person, no matter where they are, no matter what their background, to have access to this wisdom? And over the past 50 years, centers have been opened in almost every major city in the world. In every language of the world, you can find a book on Kabbalah. But now, through the technology of the internet, you don't even have to be next to a center. No matter where you are in the world, through Kabbalah.com, you can begin your journey into this wisdom. You can begin this journey into achieving the life for which you were created, a life with unending and ever-growing joy, happiness, and fulfillment. I hope you take the opportunity and begin your process of transformation today.